long life's sea So burdened with sin and distress Then I heard a sweet voice Saying, make me your choice I entered the haven of rest I slowly sleep in the haven of rest I will not see Last week, we looked at the, the message, the Son of God, and we learned quite a bit about the Son of God, that truly He is the Son of God, and because that He is, He brought the gospel to us. Because Jesus is who He is, who He said He was, and what He did, it made it possible that we could have the gospel of Jesus Christ. And today we're going to take a look at that gospel, turn and take your Bibles uh, over to Colossians to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, as we're going to look at these verses this morning, verses 1 through 8, concentrating mainly on verses 3 through 8, those six verses as we're going to look at the progress of the gospel, the progress of the gospel. Did you know when you got saved, it just didn't stop there? There ought to be a progression uh, of the gospel in your life and in my life. And as we go through this, we're going to be able to take a look at it and tell. And that kind of like is a little bit of a thermometer and an indicator of whether or not we really have received the gospel or not if these things are evidence in our lives. And Paul deals with that here with the church of Colossae. Paul's writing this matter of fact in his first imprisonment in Rome where most of the New Testament of Paul's writings were written in prison. 
around somewhere around 60 A.D. possibly as he writes this letter. And what happens is many times this happened after Paul has gone in and planted a church and led believers to Christ and began to grow them and he moves on into his missionary journeys. Here comes the false teachers. Here comes all the false teachers and they begin to bring in their heresy and heretical preaching and teaching and false teaching and preaching. And that's what's happened here at Colossae, what's going on. And their particular one was different than those in the book of Galatians uh, where they were more into the intellect uh, with the Galatians and, and, and knowledge. And then they were into angels and then speaking and talking with angels and all this stuff. This group is more into uh, foods and diets and eating and, and ceremonials and rituals. Rituals and, and all that kind of stuff that has to go along with your, quote, gospel, with your salvation. And so Paul uh, takes some time to write a letter to these believers and explains to them the progress of the gospel. And so we're going to take a look at that this morning, Lord willing, here in this passage, as we see this, as if we have evidence in the life of a believer. And Paul presents, I believe, seven aspects of of the gospel in these verses here to these believers and we're going to take a look at those seven aspects there so follow along with me if we would please begin reading in Colossians chapter 1 verse number 1 Paul identifies himself right off the bat Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ now I want you to notice the next phrase there in your Bible you might want to circle or underline it notice Paul was not a self-appointed apostle hello we got enough of those today, don't we? Okay? Paul was not a self-appointed apostle. He was an apostle by the will of God and Timothy, our brother. Here's the letter now. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. How many of you are in Christ today? So here we have a letter to the West Marian Baptist Church from the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of the New Testament writing to us, the saints here at West Marion. Ah, oh, aren't you glad you're a saint today? Praise God. Amen. You all look so beautiful and pretty today. He says, grace be unto you. That means all of God's favor be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he begins to give us the progress of the gospel and gives us seven aspects of it. And we'll take a look at it. But let's look at it. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven... Whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Anybody kind of getting the idea of what's going on here? All right, he's talking about the gospel, being saved, born again, okay, through the grace of God and faith of Christ, okay. As ye also learned of Ephesus, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. May we pray together. Our Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this wonderful passage of Scripture that you've given to us through your apostle, the apostle Paul, uh, through the Holy Spirit, and we simply want to give you praise and glory and honor for it. And God, we thank you for everything today. Thank you for this truth of the gospel. Thank you for those of us who have embraced it and received it by faith, and we give you praise for that. Father, if there's one here today that's never been saved, may today the day they see that they need the gospel message in truth by faith in Christ, those that will be watching by television later and radio and internet and all the means by which you've given us, may you use it to save someone for Jesus' sake. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's go back and take a look at it. We've got to start right off the bat, right here, right off the bat in verses 3 and 4. As we begin to see the first evidence of the gospel truth. Let's take a look at it. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. 
Okay, we'll stop right there and take a look at this for a moment. First of all, I want you to notice that the gospel truth is received by faith. One must receive the gospel truth by faith, you see. And we're talking about the gospel truth. And as you can see, I gave you some verses there, but before we read those, look at the A there in your outline behind that. What is the faith's object? Is Jesus Christ. Notice what he said there. In what? Christ Jesus. You see, you have received uh, the truth of the gospel by faith, and the object of our faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, you don't receive any other gospel by any other means or ways. You see, it's by faith, you see, and in the object of your faith is the person of Jesus Christ. It's not the church. It's not a denomination. You see, it's not a name or a title or a religious group or a dynasty. No, my friend, we receive the truth of the gospel by faith, and the object of that faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we've got to start right off the bat in the beginning here, as Paul does, and that's why he tells us in Romans 10, 17. So then faith, circle that word, so then what? Talk to me. Faith cometh he by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. In other words, faith comes by the word, and by the way, who is the word? Jesus is the Word, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14, and the Word became flesh. What did? The Word became flesh. Who's that? Jesus Christ. And dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. Watch this. Full of grace and truth. You see, so the truth of the gospel this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is received by faith. And the person is the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to get the gospel truth any other way. You're not going to get it by believing in anybody else, by accepting anybody else, or any other thing. It's only by the Lord Jesus Christ. And people say, why are you so dogmatic? Because the Bible's dogmatic. The Bible makes it very clear. And I'm, I feel and I pray for those that, that they're, they're so confused and, and, and wanting to believe in this and that and trust in this and that and that and so forth. Let me ask you, who's the object of your faith? See, folks, if you're believing in it for the gospel, for the truth, and the object of that faith that you're believing is not the person of Jesus Christ, then you've got a problem. See, the object of your faith cannot be the church. The object of your faith cannot be a denomination. The object of a faith cannot be a person or another religious leader. The object of your one's faith, if he's going to receive the truth of the gospel, must be the person of Jesus Christ. So Paul identifies right off the bat with these believers and telling them that they received this gospel truth by their faith in Jesus Christ. And so then he, so that's the beginning. How many of you got saved? That's just the beginning. The truth of the gospel doesn't just start, stop because you got saved and that's it. No, it continues. Here's how one of the ways as we go down through this, Paul begins to share with them because of the fact that they have received the truth of this gospel. There ought to be some things going on in their lives. There ought to be some evidence of that in their life. Ephesians 2.8, for what? For by grace are ye, what church? Saved through what? faith. Now where's your faith? What's the object of your faith? Jesus Christ. So you can read it and not take away from the scriptures. For by grace are you saved through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Alright, make sure you got it there. Okay, it's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now let's look at the next part of that phrase there in verse number 4 and we come to the second thought here. He said the gospel truth then, one who has received the gospel truth, how? By faith the results is of the love which you have towards all the saints. See when you get saved God puts a new attitude and heart in you. When you get saved you're going to have a love for people. When you get saved you're going to have a love for the brethren. Isn't that what it says? Look what he says. He talks about receiving the truth in, the, in Christ uh, there in verse uh, two, two, 4. Christ and of the love which you have towards all the saints. Folks, we got a lot of folks that don't love each other. 
Now, wait a minute. Are you saved? Well, thank you, Miss Kathy. Okay. If you have received the gospel by faith, who's the object of your faith? Christ. Then the results, you see, the truth of the gospel, the results of you receiving the truth of the gospel is love for the brethren. You're going to have a love for one another. You're going to have a love for the saints and for the believers. Isn't that what he said? Jesus said here, you see, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, 17, these things I command you, that you love one another. So you see, folks, you need to start loving each other. We need to start loving the brethren and the saints. Why? Because I have received the truth of the gospel by faith. Therefore, the results of that is the progress of the gospel in my life is I'm going to have a love for one another. Need to love each other. Matter of fact, I'll give you an example of that if I can remember the story here that I heard this week on, on the radio. How many of you remember that devout atheist, Madeline Mary O'Hara? All right. If you go back and read some of her, di her diary. And in her diary, every day she wrote a diary and all this, you know, and everything was against everything. She's the one lady, one, one lady that got prayer kicked out of school and all that kind of stuff and that nonsense, all right. But in her diary, before her death, over three times in her diary, she wrote this. She said, I desire that somebody would just love me. Can you believe that? Here's a woman that claimed to be a devout atheist, wanted God kicked out of everything, but when she wrote her daily diary, in her personal diary, she wrote as she closed out her, her death, I strongly desired that just somebody would love me. See, people, people have a desire to want to be loved. People want to be loved. And if you have received the gospel of Jesus Christ, one of the first results is you ought to have love for the brethren. Love for the saints. And we ought to have love for the lost as well. Did you know the lost people are looking for somebody to love them? They're just looking for somebody to genuinely love them. And Paul says, ah, oh, you brethren, you sisters and brothers in Christ at Colossae, because you received the gospel of truth by faith in Christ, now you have the love in your heart for the brethren, for the saints. See, there's the progress of the gospel. The gospel changes all hard and hardened heart and, and hardened attitude and hateful heart to one of loving. So he moves on. Notice he doesn't stop there. Look at verse 5. For the hope, for is always brings us over from the verses we just read there. For the and establishes something for us. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. So the gospel truth here, thirdly, rest in hope. Your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You see, the fact that I have received the gospel of truth this morning by faith in Christ has put a love in my heart for you all, but it also has given me a hope. I have a blessed hope that one day I will be with Jesus again. I have a blessed hope that I'm going to heaven one day when I die. I have a blessed hope because why? Because of the gospel truth. The truth of the gospel that I have received by faith in Christ. Has, I'm resting in the hope of the fact of the blessed hope that I'm going to heaven when I die. I'm resting in the hope that Jesus is coming again in the clouds of glory. You see, that's my blessed hope. We sing the song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You see, all other ground is sinking sand, but on Christ the solid rock I stand. You see, oh, let's look at some verses concerning hope. You see, the believer here, we have the hope. You know what our hope, our great source of our hope is? The gospel truth. That's the source of your hope that you're resting in. See, the gospel truth assures me that I have a blessed hope. So I'm resting in this hope. Paul said in there in one of his teachings, he says, Be ready, or Peter, to be ready to give an answer of the hope that's within you. Well, how are you going to give a hope if you don't have it? 
How are you going to give an answer of hope if you're not resting in that hope? The lost world says, how can you be so sure? How can you have such contentment and peace? Because I'm resting in the hope of the truth of the gospel that I have received by faith of the person of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2.19 For what is our hope? What is our hope, Paul says? Or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Or not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? When, church? At His coming. Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you looking for that blessed hope today? You see, if you're saved today, and you've received it by the truth of the gospel, and you received it by faith, and therefore the results of it is a love in your heart, therefore you're resting in that blessed hope that Jesus is coming in the clouds of glory. I think I'm resting in the fact that Jesus is coming. I'm resting in the fact that the trumpet could sound today, and I would go up to glory to meet the Lord in the air. Wow, what a day. That's a blessed hope. I have that hope within me because I have received the truth of the gospel. Paul's trying to encourage these believers because remember, they were getting sidetracked by heresy teaching and false teaching. Trying to get them to go back into Judaism and back into uh, to their dietary laws and diets and foods and ceremonies and rituals and all this kind of stuff. And Paul says, no, no, no. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Are you resting in the fact? Are you resting in the hope today? Because you have received the truth of the gospel by faith. And the object of your faith is Christ, you see. And so you say, what are you repeating it for? Because you got to get it. You need to get it and need to understand it. And they need to get it and understand it, folks. It's not about any other person or any other way. This is it, period. And the fact is that, you see, I don't have to worry even if I die. I have the blessed hope that there's going to be a resurrection. See, I'm resting in the fact of the hope that if I die before the rapture of the church, and by the way, even if there was no rapture, I still have this blessed hope that you can put me out there and bury me in the ground, a sauna tube, whatever you want to do. I want a sauna tube, nice round sauna tube, straight down in the ground with me standing on the ground, head up, ready to go. Because when the trumpet blasts and there's a re- I'm coming out like a missile like you've never seen before. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in eleventh, one hundredth of a second, I'm going to lift off out of that sound of tube shot out of there like a missile on the way to glory hallelujah why because of the blessed hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ Amen. now no one else has that kind of hope no other religious leader is going to give you that kind of hope go over there to all their lands wherever they're at and guess what their bodies are still in the grave their bones are still there turning into dust and, and, and ashes and they're still there, you see. But you go to Jerusalem and you go there to the, uh, er, the grave of Arimathias, er, there of Joseph of Arimathias, and you look at his tomb and you go back in there and guess what? He's not there. He has risen. He has risen indeed. And I have the blessed hope. See, that's the progress of my salvation. He gives me love. He gives me hope. He moves on from there. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, I love this part. Look at verse 6 now with me. Notice, we're talking about this. Notice, it's finished verse 5, finishes up what? See, for the hope which is laid up for you. Where's your hope laid up for you? In heaven. Where? In heaven. Whereof ye have heard before. In the, how did you hear this? How did you hear about this hope laid up for you in heaven? Read the verse. Look what it says. You heard it where? In the word of the truth of the gospel. See, when we take a little time to slow down and go through this phrase by phrase, we kind of get a, get a hold of this thing, you see. But look at here, verse 6a. So with that truth in mind, he moves to verse 6 and he gives us the fourth one. Which has come unto you. Which, what has come unto you? The truth of the gospel, the blessed hope, that's what's come unto you. Now notice what it does. Because it's come unto you, and it is in all the world. See, the gospel truth came unto you personally, 
Do you see that? It came unto you. Say, this gospel of the truth came unto me. See, if you've received it, the gospel of this truth has come unto me. And not only has it come unto me, to you, but it has come unto the whole world. It's come to all men. See, that's why the, Paul tells us here that the gospel truth reaches the world. The gospel truth reaches the world. Why? Because first of all, it's individual. It came unto you, to me. And then notice, it comes to all the world. Thank God it comes to all men. Look, you know what it says? The gospel came unto you first, personally, and then it came unto the world, unto all men. I'm glad it didn't come to just a select few. I'm glad it didn't just come to a, a, a group just specially elected and set aside, and that was it, and the rest of us were excluded. Thank God the gospel came to all of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. It reaches the world. That's why Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the what? World. And do what? And preach the what? The gospel to every creature. Go into all the cosmos. Why? Because the truth of the gospel is for you, but it's also for all men everywhere. And we have to take that truth. We have a responsibility and an obligation because first of all, why? Because number one, I have what? Received what? The gospel truth by faith in who? Therefore it has put a result, has given me a love in my heart for you and others. Okay? And the fact that I'm resting in this hope that heaven is my home and will be my home because I have received the truth of the gospel, you see, then therefore I must be willing to take this gospel to reach the whole world. To preach it to every creature. The whole world is to receive the gospel. I was going through our webpage this week just looking at it. See, because she keeps it updated as best as possible. I was going through it looking at it and I was talking to someone this week uh, at rehab that was in a different language. And I tried to encourage them and said, now if you'll go home and look at this website and, and, and take a look at this. I said, go over here in the menu on the front page of menu of our normal website. And down at the bottom, you're going to see a translator. I said, if you will click on that translator. I said, and it'll give you 26 different languages. If you will click on Chinese, that entire website, all 10 pages, 12 pages that we have, will turn into Chinese. And I says, and in there, there's going to be a page that tells you how to go to heaven. And it's the Romans plan of salvation in Chinese. Go check it out. Russian. Korean, Japanese, Portugal, uh, Spanish. I mean, 26 different languages. Then everything that's written on those pages, every script that's written, it turns the entire web page into Korean, Japanese, Chinese. So why? They can read it in their own language so that they, so why? So we can take the gospel to the world, to every person, so that they can receive the truth of the gospel by faith in Jesus Christ, which will put a love in their heart, which will give them a blessed hope, even though they lived behind the iron curtain in China they can have a hope knowing that one day they will go to heaven because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and have that blessed hope in their heart oh thank God for it Jesus said this in John 3 16 and 17 you're so familiar with this for God so loved the the cosmos the world that he gave his only begotten son who's that Who is it? Okay, let's make sure. That whosoever, oh, thank God for whosoever, believeth, see, there's the the receiving of the gospel, believing in, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So you see, the gospel truth this morning, Paul tells these believers here at at Colossae, he says, I want to tell you something. The truth of the gospel reaches the world. 
It's the gospel that we take out from here, folks, that's going to reach the world for Christ. Not positive thinking. Not you can get it, claim it, and bake it, and have it, and eat it too. Not that you can be everything you want to be. Now, the Army has that slogan, be Army strong now. Used to be, be, uh, be all you can be, right? Join the Army. Now it's be Army strong. It's not that, no, folks. That's not it. It's not that this is your best life now. That's not it. The message is the gospel. That's what's going to reach the world and give them a hope. You can have all that other stuff and you won't have the hope that I have in my heart and life. Because only that hope comes from receiving the gospel truth. Oh, thank God we're saved. Let's move on to 6b now. Notice the second part of that verse. Let's look at the next phrase it has there for us. Which is come unto you as it is unto all the world. Now here we go. Now here's again. If I have received the truth of the gospel by faith in Jesus Christ, the result is what? I'm going to have love in my heart. Okay? I'm going to have a blessed hope. See, here's the progress of the gospel. I'm going to have a, a, want to take the world and all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then notice what next is. Bringeth forth. Talk to me. Does what? Say it. Bringeth forth fruit. Now what does? The gospel brings forth fruit, but look what he says. As it doth also in you. See, if you're saved today, and you have received the gospel truth by faith in Christ, one of that results is you're going to be producing fruit. There's going to be fruit in your life. Look what the verse says. You're going to bring forth fruit, notice, as it doth in you. See, the truth of the gospel will bring forth fruit in your life and in my life. All right, and so we tried to give some down. You can go to John chapter 15. That's why we just put John 15. Because John 15 gives us a marvelous chapter on this thing about fruit. In the life of a believer. How many of you are saved today? Raise your hand. How many of you received the gospel truth today by faith? Then the results of that, you ought to be bearing fruit. Ooh, it got quiet. I just abbreviated a little bit for there for you. Look at it. Notice, first of all, and, and I'm, I'm going out of John chapter 15 here. And in John chapter 15, we are exhorted to bear fruit in verse 4. We are exhorted to bear more fruit in verse 2. We're exhorted to bear much fruit in verses 5 and 8. This is out of John 15. We are exhorted to bring forth fruit in verse 2, 5, and 16. We're exhorted that we our fruit that our fruit might remain in verse 16. That is, if I have received the gospel of truth, then the results or the evidence of it is you're going to be a fruit bearer. You're going to be a fruit tree bearing fruit. I encourage you to read John chapter 15 all about that. And Jesus, matter of fact, said, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. You want to glorify God today? Bear fruit. How can I bear fruit? Because of the results of the gospel truth that I have received by faith in Christ. It's going to cause me to produce fruit. So we thought about that a little bit there. There, Let's take a look at the kind of fruit. Look at the kind of fruit. And again, I've just given you some verses down here. And as you go through these a little bit real quickly with me, uh, see if these are in your life. How many of you are saved today? How many of you got the gospel truth? How many of you are bearing fruit? All right, three of you. All right, good. All right, well, let's see. Here's one. Here's one. The Bible talks about we need to bear the fruit of patience. Now, some of you are probably saying, oh, me. You need to bear the fruit of patience. That's found in Luke 8, 15, by the way. The fruit of patience. The second kind of fruit. We're to bear the fruit of righteousness. I mean, would you agree with that? Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11. Don't you think we ought to live righteous? Don't you think we ought to act righteous? Don't you think we ought to do right acts? That's what the word righteousness means. Well, the writer of Hebrew tells me in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, that I'm to bear the fruit of righteousness. So how are you doing? See, are you bearing the fruit of righteousness in your life today? That's the results of receiving the gospel truth by faith. All right, let's another one. We're to bear the fruit of holiness in Romans 6, 22. Boy, when's the last time we've heard a good message on holiness? 
Wow, it's a good thing we got carpet on this floor. Think about it. Look at the condition, church, our brothers and sisters in around the globe are, that are saved are living in. It's a mess. Where's the holiness about God's people anymore? And yet we're commanded to be ye holy. God says, I am holy. Be ye therefore holy in all manner of conversation in living. And I tell you, a lot of times as you look around, we don't have to judge people. Just observe their lives and where they're going and what they're doing and the way they're living and what they're re reading and what they're allowing in their home and in their lives. There's no holiness. Now, wait a minute. If I have received the gospel truth by faith, then the result is I'm going to be living a holy life. Right? Come on now. All right. Then notice the, the next one. They're number four. We're to be bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Notice it's not your fruit, it's the Spirit's fruit. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. We listed them. There's nine fruits there. Now, if you're saved today and you've received the gospel of truth by faith, then you have the Holy Spirit living within you, right? Amen? So therefore you have the fruit of the Spirit, but are you exhibiting it? Are exhibiting it? Are you displaying it? What is that fruit? Well, love. What was the second result of receiving the gospel truth? Love. Come on, talk to me. Joy, peace, long sufferings. Uh, we talked to that one too. What was another one? Patience. It's another word for patience or endurance. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And out the side of temperance, I put self control. So that's what the word temperance means. A lot of Christians today have no self control. No self control. You don't have self control over your habits, you have no self control over your appetite. Man, he got quiet. We don't have self-control over our lustful desires. Now, wait a minute. If I have received the gospel of truth by faith in Jesus Christ, then the pro progress, the progress of that gospel in my life is going to cause me to produce fruit, to bear fruit. And this is the fruit I need to be bearing, what we've listed here. All right. Trying to help us today. Trying to help us today. Let's look at the latter part of verse 6 as we look at number 6. The latter part of verse 6 it says, It bringeth forth fruit as it does in you. Now, notice how does this fruit does it in you? Since the day you what? Heard of it. What is it that you heard of? The latter part of verse 5. The truth of the gospel and knew the grace of God in truth you knew the grace of God in truth you know one of the progressions of the gospel in my life is that I am rooted in grace I'm rooted in grace because why look what he said because what since the day ye heard of it what did you hear of how many of you heard of the grace of God for by grace are you saved right right did you hear of that did you hear that verse for by grace you saved so since the day you heard that verse okay and others were dealing with grace that we talked about and you knew the grace of God in truth I knew there talks about being rooted grounded established fixed in the grace of God Oh, look at it. Romans 3, 24. Paul put it this way. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to how many? To all men. Titus 3.7 there, That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according, here we go, back to the hope of eternal life. See, we're back to that blessed hope. How did that come? Because I'm rooted in God's amazing grace. Oh, praise the Lord. 
I'm so thankful that I have the privilege today because of the gospel that I'm rooted in His grace. I'm rooted in His favor. May all the grace be upon you as we go from here. Paul nearly opened up every one of his 13 letters and closed them out with that saying. May the grace of God be upon you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the devil doesn't like it. Because he don't like the grace of God. He doesn't want anybody to learn about the grace of God and to know the grace of God and to live in the grace of God. And to have God's grace upon them. Oh, thank God, because I have received the gospel truth today, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, if my back wasn't like it is and knees and everything else, I'd do a somersault off this platform just to know the fact that I'm rooted in God's amazing grace. Amen. See, the progression, the progress of the gospel, what it affords to me. Now, we talk about that because it's a prog the progress of the gospel. We tried to list a few of them down there for you. Look at down there at the bottom of your page there. In other words, the Bible exhorts you and I to grow in grace in 2 Peter 3.18. We're to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 5.2, Paul says, wherein you stand in this grace. You stand in God's grace. See, because of the gospel truth, and because you have received the gospel truth by faith, and the object of your faith is the person of Jesus Christ, today you and I, we stand in His grace. Boy, it doesn't get any better than this, folks. If nothing else, you ought to get you excited a little bit what you got in Christ today. And the benefits that you have, and the blessings that you have, and the security that you have in your salvation. And if you notice, this is all about Jesus, not, nothing about you or me. That's what I like about it. Notice that we continue, the apostle says in Acts 13, 43, that we continue in grace. How many of you are continuing in grace today? You see, all oh, these are the benefits of the progress of the gospel. Then look at D there and you outline on your last page and we're about to finish. Look at here. Paul says he encourages us, exhorts us to abound in grace. Now that's another word for growing, by the way. Are you growing in grace today? Are you abounding in the grace of God today? Well, you should be. That is, if you have received the gospel of truth by faith. Then you're going to have the love of God in your heart. You're going to rest in the blessed hope of the resurrection and the hope of Jesus' return in glory. My God goodness you're going to have the opportunity to understand that the gospel reaches the world and Paul said it first reached you aren't you glad the gospel reached you today oh praise the Lord it did and then he says then you're going to experience this every day of growing in grace this every day of standing in grace this every day of continuing in the grace of God Oh, my. Then he says, we ought to minister the grace of God. In Ephesians 4.29, he says, we become partakers in the grace of God. In Philippians 1.7, then he says, we're to be strong in the grace of Christ. In 2 Timothy 2.11, then we're to be established with grace. See, this is the process of your salvation because you have received the gospel truth by faith in Jesus Christ. Wow, what a blessing. What a glorious truth. To go out of here to wake up tomorrow morning and say all of this. Man, today I'm going to abound in God's grace. Today I'm going to grow in God's grace. Today I'm going to have God's grace of His favor on me today. I'm going to minister to someone today the grace of God. I mean, people, you know, hurting today. And they need somebody to minister the grace of God to them. That's your job, my job to do that. Oh, I'm partaker of God's grace. Oh, thank God I'm a partaker of His grace. Thank you, Lord, that I have become a partaker of your amazing grace. Of all of your favor is upon me. Why? Because I have received the truth of the gospel. By faith in Christ. Oh my. Let's look at the last one and we're finished this morning. Verses 7 and 8. As ye also learned of our dear fellow servant. 
who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Did you know that because of the gospel truth, it is to be reported by people? The gospel truth is to be reported. That's what Paul tells him here, his brother, that this brother has reported unto you the gospel of truth. We have a responsibility and an obligation. In other words, it is to be shared by men. And I use that generically term, humanity. You see, if you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, have received the gospel truth by faith, not by church denomination, not by church role, not by church membership, not by signing a card, not by walking an aisle, not being baptized, dunked, not being poured on, not being sprinkled on, not going through a class. No, that's not how you receive the gospel of truth today. You're going to receive it by faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And if you have, then the process of that salvation and gospel in your heart and my heart is for me to share it with everyone around me. Are you sharing the gospel truth? Are you witnessing? Are you being a testimony? Are you testifying on behalf of Christ? Again, Jesus said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach. The word preach means to herald a message, to be a heralder. The what? The gospel, the euangelion, the good news of the gospel to every creature. Why? Because Acts 1 8 says, But ye shall receive power. Now, what do we need power for? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus, again, after this ascension, came back and he says, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Because I have received the message of the gospel of truth today by faith. The result is I ought to be sharing it with others. We ought to be giving it out and inviting others to come and to receive this message of the gospel of truth by Jesus Christ. You're not going to get saved by a denomination. You're not going to receive the gospel of truth by putting your faith in another person or religious leader. You're not going to get saved this morning by rece- or receive the gospel of truth by putting your faith in a church or denomination or name of that denomination or any other religious leader that's out there. By the way, you're not going to receive the gospel of truth today by putting your faith in Allah. You're not going to receive the gospel of truth by putting your faith in Mohammed. You're not going to receive the gospel of truth by putting your faith in Joseph Smith. You're not going to receive the gospel of faith, or the truth of the gospel of faith, by believing in Brigham Young, or Lottie Sun Moon, or Reverend Moon, or, any, or David Koresh, or Jimmy Jones, or any of these other false prophets and messiahs that have come on the scene. And you're not going to be saved today and receive the gospel of truth, of the message of truth, by putting your faith in the President of the United States. It's not going to happen. It is the person of Jesus Christ. That is the message. If we have been saved and received that glorious truth, then Paul says the result is I have the love of God in my heart. The result is that I rest in the hope of the resurrection and the soon appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my blessed hope. The result is that I know and understand now that the gospel reaches the world because it reached me first. Hallelujah. I have the assurance that it's going to produce fruit in my life. There ought to be being fruit being produced in my life. Then I understand that I'm rooted in the grace of God. And oh, we could go on and on about the grace of God. Then I realize that I have a responsibility and an obligation to report that truth. To share it. To share the message of the gospel of truth that one receives it by faith. You ought to read the next verses beginning in verse 9 and on as he continues on. We might talk about that next week a little bit as we look at verses 10 and go down through to verse 14 as he continues with that. But I like the last verse of verse 14. Look at that. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. 
Thank you, Brother David, for singing about the blood today. Didn't even know we were going to bring that out. But thank God for the blood, for the forgiveness of sin. I ask you a question today, those of you that are looking and watching, those of you that are here in the auditorium with you. Have you personally received the gospel of truth by faith in Jesus Christ? If you have not, why not today? Why not right now? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes here in the auditorium? Those of you that are watching by television, listening on the internet, television, radio, iPads, iPhones, wherever. If you have never received the gospel truth, and the only way you can receive it, my friend, is by faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Nothing else. If you have not done that, we invite you to do so right now. Would you pray with us? It's not the prayer that saves you. It's putting your faith in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says we must confess with our mouth. We must believe in our heart. We must call upon Him. And we must receive Him. We're going to do that right now. For many of you that are watching and listening, wherever. Would you just pray with us? Simply pray, dear God, that's right. Go ahead. Right here in the auditorium as well. I confess with my mouth. You are the Lord Jesus. I confess that I've sinned against you, God. And I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me. And he will, my friend, he will. I do now believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. He took my place. He paid my sin debt. I believe he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Right now by faith I do call upon you Lord Jesus and receive you into my heart and life to be my Lord and my Savior and to take me to heaven someday when I die. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in today with us and listening. And now may the grace of God be upon you. In Jesus' name. How about you today, church? Are these evidence in your life that we went through because you have received the gospel message? That you have a love in your heart? That you're rooted in grace? That you have this blessed hope? That you're sharing the gospel? That you're bearing fruit? See, these are all results These are the aspects of one receiving the gospel. And if not, then why not? And if maybe you're lacking a little bit in these areas, why not come and ask the Lord to help you? Give you a little strength, some courage to help you. Maybe some of these areas where maybe you're falling a little short in. Just to help you along and strengthen you along. He will, He will. Perhaps maybe there's one here today you've never been saved never trusted Christ maybe you prayed with us just a while ago and thank goodness and thank God you did why not come and make it public today be with us oh let God have his way today in the service you'll go out of here rejoicing and praising God and thanking him oh the gospel of truth thank God for the gospel let's all stand together Sing our hymn of invitation.
Sweet.